the Kia Seltos got an upgrade for the 2024 model year. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and before we get started, I want to give Durham Kia a huge shout out and thanks for giving me access to this thing to shoot the video for you guys. You can find their contact information in the description. You'll find a build link for this specific one, and then videos for tech walkthroughs all in the description of this video. There are a few different style wheels that you're going to find inside of the Seltos, and you're either looking at 17 or 18 inch, with the 18 inch wheels typically going to be in those higher trim levels of the vehicle. Doesn't matter if you're in Canada or the States, you are going to find the Seltos front wheel drive or all wheel drive, but that is also trim level specific. So depending on the trim level, like when you're in those higher ones, strictly all wheel, but when you're in the lower trims, front wheel with the availability for all wheel drive instead. Whether you go all wheel drive or not is going to depend on where you live and if you care about gas mileage. Because all wheel drive, slightly less fuel economy in comparison, but big benefit is that winter time, better traction. So it's gonna be a matter of personal preference there. There is a nice little black highlight that follows all the way throughout the body of the vehicle. And then pushing towards the front end, there is the option for either halogen or LED headlamps inside of this. So the halogen, just in the base model, otherwise you're looking at LED headlamps and then fog lamps down below. But the styling in the front end is very unique. You've got this like groove texture that goes all the way through the grill on the top and the bottom. Nice blacked out grill there, which looks sharp. Kia badge along the very top. And that same kind of like metallic highlight there follows through to the bottom part of the bumper. There's not a ton of technology you're gonna find in the front end though. So you're never gonna find the forward sensing system inside of this thing whatsoever. Just between the I and the A and the Kia badge, there's a release. So you're gonna go off to the side and up she goes on a prop bar, which I mean, realistically not difficult to take that thing or to lift it up whatsoever. And then we're looking at the two liter naturally aspirated, so non-turbocharged engine. And the Seltos does have two different engine choices that are available. So it's either the two liter or the 1.6 liter turbo. And the 1.6 liter is just like a night and day difference power wise compared to this. Because this two liter has 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque versus the 1.6 liter turbo is 195 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. It's like a little bit of a difference. So if you are power conscious, you want more power, you definitely want to look at the SX trim level or the X Pro, which feature the 1.6 turbo. But if you're just looking for like a first driver or you just don't care about fuel economy, you just want to get A to B nicely, the two liter is still a pretty good option. But there's not too much under the hood here. There's a nice little engine cover. And then if you're doing some work yourself, you could easily top up fluids, checking and changing your oil and then easy access to the battery. But the one thing you wanna make sure you're doing is at least regularly maintaining your vehicle. You wanna make sure that you're maintaining the manufacturer's warranty, which is pretty solid, but you also wanna make sure you get the best possible life out of your vehicle. I mean, you're spending a couple bucks on this thing, you might wanna make sure you're taking care of it. So just at very minimum regular, manu uh, regular oil changes, but also just make sure you're taking it in for regularly scheduled maintenance as well. The back end of the Seltos has that same black highlight that runs through at the body. There's a glossy highlight right in the middle of the bumper too, which looks kind of neat. Now some basic styling wise, we've got the Seltos badge along the side, Kia badge along the middle, reverse wiper, as well as the rear camera. So those things are gonna be standard, but other than that, there's not really much in the back end of the vehicle here. And then just underneath the I and the A in Kia, all you're gonna do is just kind of jam some fingers in there and push. Uh, up she goes. And I mean, in the trunk area, there's actually not too much stuff back here. Off to the right-hand side, there's literally nothing. Off to the left-hand side, there's a tiny little light back there. It's really about it. But this one, so just regular carpeted liner in the back. You could do an aftermarket weather tech if you wanted to. So if you wanted something for the back to protect it, like muddy boots and things like that. One thing that I like about this though, so you've got a little slider here. And lifting this out, there is a mini spare tire with a jack. So if you wanted to change the tire yourself, if you pop one, you do have that mini spare available as an option inside of this thing. And then, like I said, you can change it yourself, but you also do have access to Kia roadside assistance. So if you want somebody else to change it for you, you've got that flexibility. Uh, one thing that I like about a lot of Kia vehicles is what's going on with the cargo area. So you pull this cargo tray off, there's actually a way that you can slide it down a little bit lower to give you a little bit more height. 
So if you need a little bit more space, you actually do have the flexibility to do it. So it's kind of like a multi adjustable or multi height cargo area. Gives you an extra like three and a half, almost four inches of space, which is kind of cool. So if you need that extra space, you can just slide the tray out in different ways if you want to. Folding down the second row seats inside of the Seltos is also straightforward. So for the most part, you should be able to reach it from the back, but there's a release along the top. You just pull and push. If you can't reach it from the trunk area, you're just gonna go into the second row seats there. Along the top, you can just grab and down the seat goes. And when you've got the seat down, it gives you quite a little bit of space inside of the cargo area of the vehicle. But when you've got the tray down as well, it does create a little bit of a lip, but it's a fairly flat fold otherwise. Not fully flat, but fairly flat at the same time. Filling up fuel inside of the Seltos is also straightforward, just along the driver's side. One nice thing about the Seltos is that this thing is actually locked. So you need to hop into the first row in order to be able to unlock this thing. But I mean, straightforward to do it. And then you've got just a cap system there. If you're worried about fuel theft, you could get an aftermarket cover there with a key if you want to. Looking at fuel economy, doesn't matter if you're in the two liter or the 1.6 liter turbo, regular 87 is the minimum manufacturer's recommendation. So you don't need to use a higher octane fuel in either vehicle. There is the argument of using a higher octane in turbocharged engines. It's just not gonna make a big difference with the 1.6 turbo. If you're concerned about fuel economy, you definitely wanna look at front wheel drive. But I mean, I was kind of stressing it there. If you live in, in any place where you're gonna get snow, having the all wheel drive system is just like a complete night and day difference. So if you are looking for better winter performance, all wheel drive is where you're gonna to wanna to be. You just get slightly less fuel economy when you look at all wheel drive as an option. Taking a peek at the size of the Seltos. This thing, pretty low profile and it's not too long, which is fantastic. I did mention drivetrain or strictly looking at either front wheel or all wheel drive. You've got that option just depending on what you care about. Roof rack rails are there. You do have the option for crossbars as well. So if you do wanna put like a roof rack carrier on there, you do have the flexibility to do it. Side view mirrors do have lights. So a blind spot monitoring system. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, that's gonna to highlight to let you know. Along the driver's side door here, you could push this button if you wanted to lock the doors, but you could also push and open up. Nice, but let's have a peek. So it's this nice glossy highlight all throughout and that follows through the dash all the way through the passenger side. But we'll touch on that one when we actually get inside. Looking at some basic highlights, you can see there, nice kind of cutout, and that's the same for the top and then for the bottom speaker. Really neat groove texture there. But there are a few different speaker systems that are available inside of the Seltos, just depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. So nice stitching that follows throughout. Basic side view mirror control, basic window control, little handle, and then storage down there as well. On the side, the vent has a nice metallic highlight basic controls there, so you can either increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen or the media screen. There would be other buttons there for the head-up display and a few others, but it ultimately depends on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. It's just this one, fully naked. And then the auto start stop button, so that's the one that's potentially gonna kill power to the engine if you're stopped for an extended period of time. And then basic traction control as well. The steering wheel inside of the vehicle is gonna be manual telescoping, and that's the same way across the entire vehicle lineup. These are your carpeted mats you're going to find in the Seltos, with the nice Seltos lettering there. And then for the seats. So whether you get cloth seats, faux leather, etc., it's going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. And then that trim level is also going to dictate whether it's a manual seat, like what you see here, or if it's a power adjustable seat. So manual adjust, you can bring the seat forwards and backwards by lifting up there. And then you can increase. So if you want to raise the seat up, you can go that way, or you can drop down if you wanted to and then you're gonna adjust your backrest this way. If you had a power seat, you just have a series of toggles to slide the seat forward, backwards, up and down, and then there'd be another toggle to adjust your backrest as well. It's very straightforward. But let's hop inside, because the inside here, really nice, it's compact and cozy. I love the new cluster screen that's available inside of this thing. The 10.25 inch, I think is just beautiful. And then the multimedia screen, the base one, I love that it's wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. 
I don't like how it's not wireless in the bigger one. I'm like, ah, backwards. But still, the screens themselves are nice. It is good that you've got factory navigation available in the larger screen, though. But let's talk seats. So the seats inside of this one are comfortable. The headrest, two-way adjustable. It's actually not bad. Could be a little bit more cushion, but still, it's still pretty comfy for the headrest. Not too shabby. With the seat as far back and as far down as it's going to go, that is ridiculous. I've got like five and a half, almost six inches, six, yeah, plus probably like six plus inches of headspace there. That's wild. Like I'm six feet tall. So there is plenty of space inside of this thing if you need it, which is great. Nice. I like it. Steering wheel inside of this thing is pretty nice. It does have the option for heated wheel. You can see that just right by the shifter there. So just button press to turn it on or off. Now a few things before we kind of dive in. There are technically two different cluster screens and two different multimedia screens that are available. So there's either a 4.2 inch, which is just in the base trim level. Otherwise you're getting this 10.25 inch digital. And then the multimedia screen is either going to be this smaller eight inch. And then there's also a 10.25 inch as well. So the one that you get there obviously is going to depend on which version of the vehicle that you're in, so which trim level of the vehicle. But if you want walkthroughs, like how to use the different cluster buttons, uh, the steering wheel buttons, go through the cluster screen or go through the multimedia screens, you'll be able to find those walkthroughs in the description of the video. But some highlights. Stick on the left side, blinkers, figure out what's going on to the running lamps. I always just recommend to keep the lamps in the auto mode. Stick on the right side is for your front and then your rear windshield wipers. Straightforward. This button there is a voice command prompt or to activate Google Siri Assistant, answer hang up on a phone call, adjust volume. And then this is going to be for your cruise control. So this one is just the regular cruise control system. There may be the option for the smart cruise control instead. And then these two buttons would be to navigate through the little cluster screen. But the cluster is neat because you've got the flexibility of adjusting out the dynamic look, which we'll touch on in just a second. Like so the steering wheel is nice. It's good. Nice highlights through at the wheel itself. I like it all around. It's the dash. Really nice along the passenger side there. It's almost got like a faux like carbon fiber look to it, but it's not carbon fiber. It's just like a glossy look though. Push button start inside of the Seltos. And then this is the smaller eight inch media screen. Did mention there would be the option for a larger 10.25 inch. The larger one has factory navigation. This one doesn't. But you can connect through iPhone devices on this one if you wanted to go through Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. And then Android devices, you can use Google Maps. But otherwise, this thing doesn't have factory navigation available in this smaller setup. But you've got radio mode, so you can toggle in your radio if you want to, media, AM, FM, Bluetooth, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and then USB music. So if you had a USB stick with MP3s on it, you could listen to audio that way. So let's plug in and you can listen. I'm going to start it from zero and kind of crank the volume up as we go. It's actually really solid audio inside of this thing, even just in the base system. So let's try this again from zero and there's nothing done after like post-processing. This is all just from the microphone itself. Okay, so at first I had it at about half volume and then I cranked it up. It was about three quarters of the way there. I have adjusted the treble and bass on this one though. So the treble is down two points and the bass is up three. So it's got just like a deeper audio experience there. So the bass system, I got to say, like it's actually better than I expected. You've got your volume rocker, tuning rocker as well, four-way blinkers. This one just has single zone climate control, all of the basic climate control settings. Dropping down, there would be the option for a wireless charge pad. It's just that this specific one doesn't have it. But there are a series of power points. You've got a traditional 12 volt, and then a USB type A, and then a USB type C down there as well. The shifter inside of this thing is nice. You've got the park reverse neutral drive. You can drop it down if you wanted to adjust gears out yourself instead. This is a little rocker switch in order to move between different drive modes. So three individual modes are so normal, sport, or smart mode. Each mode will do something different, like your smart mode is going to hold onto the RPMs a little bit longer to give you a sportier performance as you drive. You've got the option for heated first row seats and then ventilated first row seats available, just depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. This is the heated steering wheel button, and then you've got some passenger side controls, including downhill brake control. 
If you were in the auto, uh, the all-wheel drive, you'd also have an all-wheel drive lock button if you wanted to stick in all-wheel drive mode all the time. Moving down, you've got a few cup holders, manual parking brake, and then an armrest with a nice amount of storage space. No other power points or anything like that on the inside there, though. I mentioned this is kind of an interesting gloss. There's some gloss all over the place inside of this thing. A little glove box there. And then shooting up overhead, this, just a manual dimming rear view mirror, basic controls for cabin lights, and then this thing does have the option for a little sunroof. It's just that inside of this base trim level, I guess technically this is the second lowest trim, there's no sunroof available, but it is technically available in some of the higher trims of the Seltos. From there, you've also got a visor light right up over top there. You can turn on yourself, a little receipt business card holder, and then little mirror built in and this thing extends out blocking all of the sun that might be hitting your face there is the option for a head-up display inside of the Celto, so the 24 model and that's going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in uh, this specific one doesn't have it but when i'm in a Celtos that does have it what i'll do is i'll link down in the description of this video with a walkthrough on how the head-up display works and how it looks because it is really really neat so this is the way that I would traditionally drive the vehicle if I was driving myself. And like with the seat set up this way, inside of the second row, I've got a great amount of knee space, great amount of foot space, and like functional second row space, which is amazing. Like I can actually fit back here, which is pretty rare. But I mean, sitting fully upright, I even have head space. Like I've got almost three and a half inches of head space, which is amazing. And like the seats are comfy. Not uh, obviously like quite as comfortable as the first row, but still not too shabby. It's good. Good, good, good. Now, there would be the option for heated second row seats in some trim levels of the vehicle. So if that's a feature that you want, you're looking at the highest trims in order to get it. But I mean, there's not too much back here. It's pretty straightforward and simple. You've got a speaker along the door, driver, passenger side, basic window controls. Up overhead, there's a handle with a little hook, driver, passenger side. Got a little light up overhead too. And then behind the driver's side, there's no pocket, but you will find one just behind the passenger side. And then just behind the first row armrest, there are a few basic vent controls, two USB type C power points, and then a little storage tray as well. And then only other thing to point out would be cup holders back here. So there's no lever or anything like that in order to be able to get to the cup holders. You just kind of have to jam your fingers in and then pull down in order to get access to the cup holders there. And that was a look at the 2024 Kia Seltos, specifically the EX base trim level, but I hope you'll learn a thing or two. If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. And as I mentioned, you can find a build link for this specific one all the tech walkthrough videos and the contact information for Durham Kia down in the description as well. But if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until I see you next time, take care.